All right, well, here we are at the end of 2019. Welcome back, everybody, to the final Energy and Natural Resources weekly update of 2019, going over everything of significance that happened over the course of the week pertaining to oil, gas, minerals, mining. So as usual, if you're remotely interested in such subject matter, please subscribe and click the bell and stick around here. I also just recently uploaded my 2020 energy and resource predictions video. So for anyone who hasn't seen that, uh, you should go see that as well. There's a link up in the corner to it, and it'll be one of the video links that appears at the end on the end screen as well. Also, for anyone who has donated me money this year through my PayPal link, which is still in the description below, stay tuned after the end of this video, because at the end there will be footage uh, showing everybody's names carved in to the giant chunk of coal, as promised. And now we will get going with uh, what little we have for this week. As given it's the multi-week holiday period, a lot of data releases um, are sort of on hold, unfortunately, until the second week of January, which is really disappointing. But we do have enough stuff to get by, at least. U.S. oil production, after getting up to 12.9 million barrels per day for a couple weeks, had dropped back down to 12.8 for a couple weeks. Now it's back up to 12.9 again. And before the end of 2020, I'm expecting it to make it up to 13.6, but I'll be surprised if it comes in lower. And again, as always, basically all of that just coming from the Permian Shale, because that's essentially all that's left now in terms of growth. U.S. oil consumption dropped a little bit for the week, coming in at 21.3 million barrels per day. Individual product numbers within that being... U.S. gasoline consumption averaging 9.3 million barrels per day for the week. U.S. diesel fuel consumption averaging a little bit above 4.2 million barrels per day. U.S. jet fuel consumption averaging around 1.54. And as the previous week to which the data pertains was a very cold week, U.S. propane consumption jumped up to 1.85 million barrels per day equivalent. And on the global scene, Global jet fuel consumption, U.S. jet fuel consumption included in that, obviously. Global jet fuel consumption averaged a flat 5 million barrels per day for the week. And U.S. crude oil inventories over the week decreased by 5.5 million barrels, while oil prices were between $60 and $62 per barrel, gradually climbing from $60 up towards $62 over the course of the week. Now, the natural gas specifics are one of the things that are on hold until the second week of January. So all we're getting this week and next week is just the general storage data. U.S. natural gas storage inventories, after a very cold week, dropped down to 3.25 trillion cubic feet in storage. In comparison to normally, they would still be up at 3.32. And in comparison to last year, they were already down to 2.73. And price-wise, natural gas fluctuated around between $2.15 and $2.30 per thousand cubic feet. And we have the monthly oil production data from that isolated group of nations. China still cleaning on to their 3.7 to 3.9 million barrel per day range, decreasing a tiny bit, but still rounding out at 3.81 million barrels per day. Canada coming back up from 4.32 up to 4.39 million barrels per day. Egypt remaining the same at 627,000 barrels per day. Mexico beginning to stall its terminal decline a little bit again, gaining a few bits over the past few data releases from 1.7 up to 1.71, now up to 1.73 million barrels per day, though still beneath their own domestic consumption levels, which currently average around 1.9 million barrels per day. And Russia dropped a little bit from 10.9 down to 10.86 million barrels per day. In terms of metals, we didn't have any movement in rare earths over the course of the week. So going to precious metals, gold inventories dropped a bit more down to 8.59 million ounces in storage. And gold prices climbed back up over $1,500 per ounce. Silver inventories ticked up a tiny bit from 317 to 318 million ounces in storage. And over the course of the week, silver prices went up over $18 per ounce before falling a bit back under it towards the end of the week. 
Platinum inventories still holding around 159,000 ounces in storage. Platinum prices continued fluctuating between $900 and $950 per ounce. Palladium inventories, which almost never update, still stated as around 52,000 ounces in storage. Palladium prices climbing back up over the course of the week, coming back up over $1,900 per ounce. And rhodium dropping a little bit more over the course of the week, down to $6,075 per ounce. Aluminum inventories have stopped climbing and decreased a little bit from 1.49 down to 1.48 million tons in storage, with aluminum prices gradually increasing from around $1,790 up to around $1,820 per ton. Nickel prices continue fluctuating between $14,000 and $14,500 per ton, and nickel inventories remained basically flat at about 143,000 tons in storage. And the Great Indonesian Nickel Export Ban is now only a few days away. Lead inventories rounded still rate right at about 67,000 tons in storage, though they did decrease a little bit from a few hundred over it to a few hundred under 67,000 tons. And similar to copper lead mine output globally, as of the current data for 2019, is basically flat. It's barely any higher than the lead output from mines during 2018 was. So both copper and lead, in terms of mine production globally, are having a flat year this year. Lead prices over the course of the week climbed up to and exceeded $1,900 per ton again, and zinc prices back up over $2,300 per ton as zinc inventories continue dropping, decreasing from $53,000 down to just under 52,000 tons in storage, a far, far cry down from the over 1 million tons in storage that they were several years ago. And in one miscellaneous metal update, Manganese prices continue dropping, dropping from $1,550 down to $1,500 per ton. Manganese being one of the three foundational materials of steel, the primary basic mixture of steel at least being predominantly iron, with somewhere around 1% carbon and 1% manganese mixed in. And then depending on the specific type of steel alloy you're trying to make, then you also can add in other things. Anything from chromium and nickel to molybdenum, tungsten, rhenium, hafnium, all kinds of stuff. Oh, and before I forget, Guyana has entered the chat. Oil production has begun offshore of Guyana now, and their actual exports, actual shipments of the crude oil out of the country will begin in January, in a few days. Unfortunately, that is all we have for this week. So that's it. This is the final Energy and Resource Weekly Update for 2019. So thank you, everybody, for sticking around and listening. As always, please like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not already. Donate money through the paypal.me in the description below. And those of you who already had donated something before Christmas of this year, stick around for a few more seconds. But that's it for now. May God bless you all. I will see you all around next time, and here's the footage. So, I already let you guys know, this didn't exactly work out. Even though coal is much more brittle than regular rocks, carving into it was uh, not as easy as I was expecting. So I had to take some shortcuts. Basically, I had to resort to uh, only using straight lines, because curving wasn't working out all that well. And, uh... I had to abbreviate some names because uh, my my hand, uh, particularly that part between the finger and the thumb, like right in there, yeah, that is still killing me from uh, having to press so hard into this to carve it. Uh, so hopefully you can see some of them. That's a, a, a Superman S right there. Can't make out the V all that well. Um, I abbreviated Steven as uh, Steve, and uh, let's see, got Dylan on there, um, there's the Y, probably can't really make that out all that well. The N basically just turned into an arrow, and uh, the D is unrecognizable because I used Dylan's name first, and I was trying to actually, you know, carve a curve for the D, but I learned that uh, that doesn't really work out. 
So uh, then I tried to correct it, and then I realized that uh, it just became a line. Uh, here we have uh, my attempt at Andreas. I decided to uh, just abbreviate it as uh, A-N-D. And, uh, well, there's the A just above my finger. The N didn't exactly work. Um, and then the D, I don't even know what happened with the D. I only did this like an hour ago, but I can barely remember. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so here we have, I believe, uh, this was supposed to be a K, though it only really worked out, uh, on the bottom part. Can't really see the upper two lines there, but you can see the bottom two. This was supposed to be, uh, Chris, you can kind of see the R, uh, if the camera will focus, uh, it was supposed to be Chris, I don't know if it was Christoph or just Christo, uh, something. It was somebody. Okay, uh, was I seriously dumb enough to try to carve, like, around there? I guess I was. Uh, I think this was, this, uh, that line right there, and then down there, and then I tried to make a curve over here. You can see how awkward the curve looks and ended up just being a line. That was the J. Um, the E is not visible, and, uh, the S sort of, like, I, I got some kind of a curve around this edge here. That was, uh, for Jesse. Um, let's see, who else is here, and where are they? Um, uh, man, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. I think that was an A. Um, I'm forgetting somebody. I think there, there was an Andrew also, apart from Andreas. That's probably... That's probably supposed to be you, Andrew, whoever you are. Uh, okay, um, who else is where? Uh, I think, okay, that was supposed to be an R, you can kind of tell. And then, uh, there's a vowel there, and then there's a, there's supposed to be a J. Um, because there was, uh, someone else like, oh, it's that, that's probably Jerick. At least I, yeah, I think there was a Jerick, so that's probably J-E-R or something. Uh, did I carve anybody on the bottom? I think I did. I don't know which angle I'm supposed to look at it from, though. Ugh. Okay, is, uh... Okay, that's... Ah, okay, yeah, see, that's, that's what I had to do for D. I basically just had to make a sideways triangle. And, uh, I tried to make an A. That didn't work. And, uh, the V, you can kind of see it, but end up going all over the place. It looks more just like an upside-down arrowhead. Uh, that's just my abbreviation for David. Uh, David was another big donator. Uh, and, uh, I'm forgetting some, I'm forgetting Stephanie. I abbreviated it, I abbreviated it as, as just Steph, obviously, uh, but, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Stephanie, if you actually end up watching this. Um, so I am sorry, everybody, uh, both, uh, that this didn't work out all too well. Um, and if, uh, I forgot your name, I, I did, I did try to carve everyone's name in here, but, uh, there, there's like a few on here probably that I'm forgetting where they are, like, I think that's supposed to be something right there, but I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah, sorry guys, but uh, that's that's basically all I was able to do. I'll have to do something else. Like, I don't know, I guess, what else can we try? Maybe anyone who donates anything uh, from now on, I'll, I'll finger paint your names onto like some, some Easter eggs or something in April. But uh, thank you, everybody, who did donate. You are on this chunk of coal forever in some form, uh, even if it's not really recognizable. But thank you, everybody. I'll see you all around next time.